Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here on the Rubber DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shop Bear today. Thinking about today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale. I know today though, the big releases that come out are is uh, Bumblebee, and that one, Best Buy has an exclusive steelbook of that one. I actually did a uh, unboxing of that uh, yesterday. If you guys haven't seen it, I showed the steelbook, as well as all the other releases of Bumblebee, as well as the VHS of Bumblebee, a really fun promo item VHS for the movie. So if you guys haven't seen that, definitely check out that video. Also today, one of the other things that comes out is cleaning towards new film the mule and then I believe vice is out today also since it's the first Tuesday of the month Walmart changes out the actual section and gets in a whole bunch of new like horror films comedies all kinds of stuff the actual section changes all out so hopefully the location I go to has everything put out today and there's a, there's a couple of things in there I definitely want to try and find that they should have in here you know hopefully fingers crossed also though the end of this video there's a, be a whole bunch of brand new DVD and blurry reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys some really Really cool stuff, some new stuff from Arrow Video, uh, some uh, uh, Screen Factory titles, as well as a whole bunch of other things as well. And as always, too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs and Blu-rays and 4Ks that are reviewed, if you guys have seen any of them, also if you guys plan on picking any of those ones up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. And I'm at the one different Walmart today that usually puts out all the new stuff. So, you know, fingers crossed, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, that all the new stuff is put out in the shelves today because there's a couple different things I want to try and find in here and show for sure. Yeah, this one in here does not have all the stuff out. They have some of the stuff down here, but some of the things that I wanted to show I don't see. And they also changed over here. And I've never seen anything like this before. I saw this like years ago, like 10 years ago. They're now starting to put some stuff in these cases that they have to get them out of. This I remember at Walmarts. Some, and let me know if you guys remember this, but like I remember this years and years and years back. 10 years plus when they were doing that. So I'm going to head to another Walmart though. But I do see some of the things in here like Nancy Drew that came out today in Vice and the Mule there. But we're going to head to another location though to check. Yeah, but that was really strange about that stuff being locked up in there. And like, I, it was only like some of the things were locked up, but then like not a lot of the new things. I don't know what was going on, but like I said, I remember that in Walmart back when I lived in Maryland, back in like 2008 or 2009, I remember seeing that. So really strange. Let me know if you guys have seen that happen in your location. Into the second Walmart we go. Serious fingers crossed now that they have the stuff out and they don't have it in those cases in here as well. In here though, they have out like Bumblebee, the 4K is $27.96 and the standard Blu-ray is $22.96 and that's $17.96 for the DVD of that. They have the Mule here as well. That one's $30 for the uh, 4K and then $22.99 for the um, Blu-ray of that one. Also though, uh, this one, I'll have a review of this one at the end of this video, uh, Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. This one came out today, that one's $19.99, and then $19.96 for the DVD. Vice, this is one, I have not seen this one. If you guys have seen this movie, let me know how that one was or if that's worth watching. Also though, I'm gonna have a review of this one as well, The Man Who Killed Bigfoot, that's um, $14.96 or $12.96 for the DVD of that one. This movie looks kind of like, kind of like the cover a little bit, the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It's like Adventures of the Chocolate Factory. I don't know anything about this one. If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one was. Also, this one came out today, Help, I Shrunk My Teacher. And that one's $14.96. But when it comes to the actual section over here, none of this stuff is out. It's all the old stuff and all these empty spaces. So I have to head to another Walmart. Yeah, but today really is the day of Walmarts. I haven't been like, you know, when they haven't had things like that out like this in a long time, but hopefully the other one put everything out. Into the third Walmart we go. But in here today, luckily enough, they have out all the new stuff. This is the first location that I've seen that has this stuff all out, and it's not in those cases, too, where you have to have them get it or anything. One of the things that I wanted to show you guys that came out today, which is really cool, is a movie here called Tooth Fairy. I haven't gotten to watch the movie yet. I'm waiting for a copy of this one to come. But the thing that's really cool is in this movie, it's like it's, I know it's about a killer tooth fairy, and um, the one character is like looking up legends of this tooth fairy, and he looks up a video to find out about it. And it's a video that I you know, shot for this movie, so I have a little scene in here of him watching it. So if you guys get to check this one out, let me know what you guys thought. But like I said, I have a little scene in this one. This one's $9.96. And cool, they have this one in here. Also, this movie released here today called The Banished. I don't know anything about this one. This is one of those ones, if you guys have seen this one, let me know how that one was. Also, this movie here, uh, Red Island released. Another one, I don't know much about that. I, I might pick this one up today, I'm not sure. Um, also, um, No Surrender, that was today. Um, this one here called A Violent Man. 
The Burning Kiss. This is another one I might get today called Scare B&B, which looks kind of interesting here. I don't know, I always like these kind of movies like about going to weird like, sounds like there's like cameras and stuff in this place watching somebody, like some weird person watching them. Looks kind of interesting. Also though, this movie here, Russ Creek. Another one, I haven't seen this. If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one was. This is a um, Scream Factory title. And I think though, oh yeah, this is one of the other ones today. This one called Hell Girl, which stars Tom Sizemore. One of the things I'm not seeing in here today, which uh, it doesn't look like they're gonna have it, is a movie called, I think, like Seven in Heaven, which is like a Blumhouse movie. I think it's on Netflix, but it's on Amazon for really expensive, you know, currently. But if you guys have watched that, let me know if that one is any good. It looked kind of interesting. Like I said, it doesn't seem like they're carrying that. I think Tyrell, I don't know if that came, I, think, I know that came out a, a month or so back or a couple weeks back, but I haven't seen that in the store yet. Same with this Buffalo Bot, um, Boys 1. And I think some of these Hallmark movies here might be new. And it's like Boy, A Dream, I mean, A, a Boy, A Girl, A Dream. Other than that though, I think all these other things here are the same stuff though from, the, like, from last month. Yeah, but in there though, I ended up getting that, um, that Red Island one and uh, Scare b, b Like I said, I don't know too much about them, but both of them look kind of interesting. If you guys have seen any of these two ones though, let me know what you guys thought. Also, let me know if you guys pick up the Tooth Fairy one in there. And this past weekend, I saw a couple of different films. The first one I saw was Tim Burton's live action version of Dumbo. When it comes to the animated Dumbo though, that was one of the Disney animated ones that I never was, I don't feel like I had seen that one too often. Was not that familiar with it. Like one of the ones around that time that I did, you know, always watch when it comes to the classic Disney animation films was you know always uh, Pinocchio that was one of the ones I always really loved but Dumbo though you know the reviews have been kind of mixed on the new one but I actually thought it was a pretty cool movie the coolest part about it though was seeing you know uh, Michael Keaton and Danny DeVito together again in a Tim Burton movie because both of them were together in uh, Batman Returns also, though, I feel like the one big standout point to the film was the music. You know, of course, Danny Elfman did the music in it. Danny Elfman's done, you know, did the music in pretty much, I, th I feel like it's like, not, like 80, 90% of Tim Burton's movies. He's pretty much like, I know like Ed Woody didn't do the music. There's been a couple ones, but I felt like, though, when it came to Danny Elfman's music, I feel like this was probably one of my favorite scores from him in a really long time. It was a total throwback. To, to, me, to me, it had like the sound of Edward Scissorhands. It had like that kind of vibe to it so it was kind of cool hearing that that sort of you know old school Tim Burton vibe with the music some of his newer you know Tim Burton music that he did didn't have the exact same feel to it but you know that like I said was one of my favorite things about it but overall though I thought it was actually a pretty cool movie not perfect or anything the other one I saw was Harmony Crin's new film uh, The Beach Bum you know Harmony Crin you know I always think of him from the film Gummo which he directed which I always really like Gummo it's a very very out there movie not a movie that everybody really has you know it's kind of those movies where you either really like it or you really don't he also you know directed more recently uh spring breakers and that was the film that kind of got him more mainstream you know status and more known i think they're like this that was kind of how he got like because this new one has like matthew mcconaughey in it it has um martin lawrence in his first movie in years it also has um who else was in there? Uh, you know, uh, Isla Fisher, Fisher is in the film playing Matthew McConaughey's wife. Uh, also, you know, uh, Jonah Hill's in the movie. Jonah Hill, I really like Jonah Hill's scenes in it. And also, Martin Lawrence, like, his stuff in the movie totally steals the show. Like, he was so funny in the movie, like, the stuff that he was doing. But it's basically about Matthew McConaughey's character. It's like playing this guy who was like a poet, and he wrote, like, a couple really successful books, but he hadn't done anything in a long time. And he's kind of just going around, messing around in Florida, kind of just sort of, you know, doing, you know, smoking weed and just sort of doing a bunch of nothing. And like something changes in his life and he has to start doing something. And I don't want to say too much about what happens, but it's another one of those movies where either you're going to really like the movie or you're really not. I really got into it. I really liked it a lot. I thought that it was really over the top, some of it. And like Matthew McConaughey is playing this really crazy character, which is kind of a parody of, you know, the, of himself when he was like playing those drums years back and had all those kind of problems and stuff going on everyone was always like kind of making jokes about him playing those drum those bongos and everything it's kind of that's sort of what he was doing in this but i really liked it let me know in the comments below though if you guys saw either of those films what you thought of them or what movies you guys that you know saw this past weekend if you guys got to see anything into best buy we go
Yeah, but in here today though, I don't see any of the Bumblebee Steelbooks. Those seem to have all sold out. I didn't see any in the front either, but those ones are going to be $32.99. Like I said, I did a video yesterday showing the uh, promo VHS of it, as well as the uh, Steelbook. So definitely check that one out if you guys haven't seen that one for a closer look at the Steelbook. But it's for the uh, 4K, that one's $27.99. Standard um, Blu-ray is $22.99. They also over have, over have over here the uh, Nancy Drew, the new Nancy Drew film. Only see the DVD of that one. That's $14.99. As well as the mule here is $22.99 for the Blu-ray. Really like this one. And then Vice. I don't see that in the, out here, but I saw some of them in the front. Other than that, though, that seems to be all of the different things in here that I see today. So anyway, though, guys, that's all my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also in the comments below, let me know, you know, what you guys picked up. If you guys picked up anything on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K today. Also, let me know as well what you guys thought of all the things I reviewed at the end of this video. Uh, let me know, like, too, as well, like, if you guys have seen any of those ones or if you guys plan on picking any of those ones up. But anyway, though, guys, now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Arrow Video and it's a 1971 Giallo film here called The Iguana with the Tongue of Fire. You know, since it's a Giallo film, it's all about, you know, who is the killer. In the very beginning of this movie, you see this woman who is killed. She has acid thrown into her face. It's this crazy death. There's a bunch of crazy deaths in this movie. But since it's a Giallo film, it's all about, you know, trying to figure out who is the killer and who is behind these killings that are going on throughout the movie. And throughout the film, too, they're always pointing at different people and kind of one person does something and kind of acts sort of strange. Or then you kind of thinking could it be this person throughout like I said so throughout the whole thing it's kind of like trying to figure out who is this killer and it's about like um, the girl's body that was found in the back of this car and then it's kind of like the police are looking at the you know person who owns the car into him and then they're all kind of going through all the cases and the one person who's really on this case is trying to make it his thing to you know figure out exactly who is this killer why all these other deaths are going on around him but a really really cool film here this one has on here though a brand new 2k restoration here from the original 35 millimeter negative on this one it also has the Italian language version of the film as well as the English language version uh, feature wise though it has a new commentary track on here with Giallo uh, connoisseurs uh, Adrian J. Smith and David Flint it has on here a newly uh, film video appreciation by cultural critic and academic Richard uh, Dyer as well as a new appreciation of the composer of the film with um, uh, you know with uh, DJ and soundtrack collector lovely John as well as an interview on here with the uh, assistant editor of the film and there's also on here a career uh, stand, uh, you know spanning interview with one of the actresses from the film it has the theatrical trailers to the movie but like a really really cool giallo film also in here though is a booklet which has some pictures from the film and you know stuff all about the production and everything in here but if you guys are a fan of giallo films this is definitely one uh, worth checking out the next one here is from arrow video as well this is from the arrow academy line just want you guys know that this one is available it's a movie here called uh, mellow and this one on here though it has a brand new 2k restoration of the film as well as on here it has a newly appreciation by critic um uh jonathan ramey remini as well as an archival interview on here with the director uh archival interview on here with the producer, archival interviews with act with two of the actors in the film, uh, archival interview with the script supervisor on this one, uh, interview on here with the set designer, theatrical trailer, and also in here as well, there is a um, booklet in here with some things about the production as well. Like I said, just want you guys know that this one is available from the Arrow Academy line. And the next ones here are from uh, Shout Factory. And this one here is from the Scream Factory line. This is a movie I never had seen before called uh, Superstition. And this was a really cool movie. I really, really got into this one and really liked this. Essentially, though, this is about this old house that the church owns. And it's about a guy who's, like, new to this church. He's kind of like an up-and-coming kind of pastor at the church. He's kind of like the person who I would say is kind of going to like take over when the one guy leaves or retires. And he's kind of, like, in the early stages of this church. But this house that the church owns and it's kind of where like um you know, the pastors and stuff would live with their family. But there's been all kinds of, like, deaths that have happened in this house in the past. And, like, they really don't know what to do with it. And, like, people, like, these kids were in there in the beginning of the movie. And they ended up dying in there. So there's all kinds of weird deaths going on. And there's this, the people who are kind of watching over the house, live in the house next door. Like, this little kind of small house. And it's, like, this um, mother and her son. And they're kind of looking at, like, could the son be involved in this whole thing? But essentially, though, they're trying to figure out what is going 
going on in this house. The same time they move in these this new pastor who is like um, kind of really like a broken down guy. He's like had a lot of problems and he's in there with his kids and his wife and he's like really like like depressed and like kind of like oh I hope I can make this new job work and he's having all these kind of things and while he's in there though right at the same time there ends up being like another death on the property and like or they believe this the one this one cop who was like investigating this house and stuff they think that he may have died in the lake so it has a whole lot of stuff dealing with like this lake that's nearby and like the the history of like there was some like the weird things that had happened on this land years back and there are some crazy crazy deaths in this movie it was so, this was such a fun movie i really like this the one kid in here was from um Cujo, and he was also in one 80s movie that I always loved called uh, Just One of the Guys, and you know, he played like the younger brother in that movie, but he's in this movie as well. This has on here, though, a new uh, 2K scan of the original film elements on this one. Uh, new interviews on here with James Robinson and actor, uh, you know, by the new interview with the director, James Robinson, and the actor James Houston, as well as a theatrical trailer on this one, but definitely, definitely check this one out, guys. I absolutely love this movie. Just such a cool, like, kind of movie I had never heard of before and really liked. The next one here is a movie that stars uh, Tony Curtis and Susan Strasberg and as well as Burgess Meredith who I always love Burgess Mer Meredith. I always think of him from the movie The Sentinel and then of course like the Grumpy Old Men films but he was like really cool in The Sentinel. And this is a movie here called The uh, Manitou and this is essentially though about this woman who ends up having this kind of like um sort of like this thing growing on the back of her neck. This like, you don't know if it's like a tumor or what exactly the thing is. And she ends up going to the hospital and they're looking at it and they're thinking that it could be like some kind of a, almost like a, uh, thing that was growing on like almost like an identical twin or something that never formed they kind of have all these different theories on what exactly it is on the back of her neck and she ends up you know seeing you know her old boyfriend who's played by Tony Curtis and he has sort of theories about that it could be like you know this Native American like spirit on it there's all these kind of things that they're kind of looking into of what it is but of course though you know once they start like diving into what this is and like looking into it they start messing around with some things and it becomes a terrible situation and it's like it sort of has has like um I guess it kind of has a little bit of like an exorcist sort of kind of vibe to this one a little bit that sort of kind of feel to this is around the same time as the exorcist so it has that similar type of vibe to it but you know Tony Curtis did a really good job in this one he was kind of like a you know psychic kind of guy like that's that sort of thing but he was kind of like pretending his character that's essentially what he was and you know like I said I always love Burgess Mer Meredith um, and on here though it has a brand new 2k scan of the original film elements has a comedy track on here with film historian Troy Harworth, as well as an interview on here with the executive producer, um, as well as an interview on here with and with author Graham Masterson, as well as a theatrical trailer, TV spots, and still gallery. Also looks really, really good on uh, Blu-ray. The next one here is from uh, you know Scream Factory as well, and it's another one I had never seen before. Which stars Sam Waterson, you know, I believe he was in, you know, NCIS, I think, or no, Law and Order, I believe, but I always think of him from Serial Mom as, you know, Kathleen Turner's husband in the film, but he's been in a lot of stuff, but that's like the one thing I always think of him from most. And this is a movie here called A Warning Sign. This is essentially, though, at this kind of bio, like, kind of like biological engineering kind of place where they're, you know, kind of developing things for like farming to try and like um, certain types of soils and fertilizers kind of thing. That's what they say that they're doing. And like they're in there like messing around with these chemicals and everything. And the one guy, and they're all in like biological suits because these things are super toxic. And they are in there and his like label of his like um, sleeve thing, the label of like the, the the like the test tube gets stuck to his arm, and you see it for like the whole first like five or ten minutes of the movie, and it's like you're going, oh no, that thing is gonna fall. How is this thing gonna fall? And of course, though, it falls, and someone steps on it, and they're like, you know, they're you know celebrating their discovery. This is in the very beginning of the movie, but they're just you know, so I'm not ruining anything here, but they're celebrating their discovery, and you know, so they take off their masks to take the picture because they like succeeded what they were they were trying to do. And of course, when the masks come off, this biological suit mask they're wearing they, that's when the guy steps on it and they don't know this so this chemical leaks out and then like the you know the the uh cameras and everything detect that this chemical was leaked out so they're all in there and they end up you know 
getting the chemical like biological thing flashing on the screen the woman who's like in charge of like watching the cameras and everything she sees that pops up and of course she has to go through the book and you know lock down the place so all the things come down nobody can get in nobody can get out and it turns out that it was not a good thing that this has happened and Sam Waterson's character plays the cop who his girlfriend is inside the one who's manning the screens and everything and the cameras and he has to figure out along with like the government is all there and everything and they're figuring out what they're going to do and how they're going to get everybody out there because of what ends up happening from this biological thing that gets loose in there. It's, it's actually a pretty cool movie. I also really, really liked the music in this movie as well. This has on here, though, a uh, new interview on here with co-writer and the director and co-writer Hal Barnwood, as well as producer Jim Bloom, as well as a commentary track on here with the director, theatrical trailer, TV spot, and a uh, photo gallery on this one. The next one here is also from Scream Factory. It's a movie here called The Seven Golden Vampires. This also had another title that was released under, and it actually includes that version of the film as well. It's a shorter version of the movie called The um, The Seven Brothers Meet Dracula, and that version like cut down like a lot of the stuff, like some of the dialogue scenes and everything, and kind of like took that stuff out of it. And kind of like the trailers and stuff kind of made it look a little differently since it took out a lot of the dialogue. But essentially, though, this is about this uh, village and it's, um, I, I, I believe it was in, um, I, I think it was in China, I, I believe. I believe, yeah, I, I think that's where it was set. But essentially, though, this was about this village where... Um, you know, there were like basically the, the kind of vampires sort of ran the village before and kind of had all been like, you know, exiled away and like the village was now safe. And one of the people from the village goes to meet Dracula and, and like, you know, awakens him and says that he wants to, you know, um, be able to, you know, kind of rule and get the village back. And like, since the vampires are all sleeping and he like the vampire, you know, he ends up, you know, basically um, taking over the sky's soul, you know, the, the Dracula takes over this guy's souls and goes back over to the village and ends up awakening these these sleeping vampires and they end up you know taking over and there's these crazy scenes of them coming back to life and they have a really cool look to them this is also made by hammer horror so it has a really cool look this is from i believe this is from 1974 but essentially though it's about you know two trying to um you know um defeat these vampires that have come back to take over the village it's about a group of these people these brothers and their sister going after them and you know peter cushing is in the film as well and he's got there to try and help them as well because he's you know plays um Van Helsing, and he's trying to help them as well along the way. But actually, a really pretty cool uh, Hammer Horror film I had never seen before. This has on here, though, a brand new 2K scan of the film. Here has a comedy track on here with author and film historian uh, Bruce Hallenbrook, uh, Hallenbeck, as well as an interview on here with Hong Kong uh, film expert Rick uh, Baker. And like I said, it has the alternate U.S. version of the, as well, and that version is in HD as well, as well as a uh, TV spot, still gallery, and a theatrical trailer on this one. And the next one I got here is from Lion's Gate. This is the uh, 4K Ultra HD edition here of the movie uh, Man on the Ledge, which is uh, starring uh, Sam Worthington, Elizabeth Banks, Jamie Bell, Anthony Mackey, uh, Genesis Rodriguez, as well as Ed Harris. Essentially, though, this is about um, Sam Worthington's character who ends up, you know, breaking out of prison. And he's basically, you know, because he was put away for stealing this diamond. That, you know, that he says, I did not steal this diamond. And they're saying that he stole it from Ed Harris's character. And he's like saying that, that, that he still has this thing. There's no, wh why am I being framed? I'm totally being framed here. What he does is goes to the building across the street from where Ed Harris's character works. And he steps out on the leads like he's going to jump. And he's there, like, you know, attracting attention. The police are there. He's, like, being trying to be talked down and everything. And he's like, listen, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to prove my innocence. That's why I'm here. And, and they're, like, going, come on, step down, get on down. And he, he's like, no, I have to stay out here. Because what's going on is the building across where, the, you know, Ed Harris's character works is, you know, where they he says the diamond is. So his brother is in there with these other people breaking into the building or trying to get into the building. And he's, like, you know, trying to distract everybody Why there's explosions and all kinds of different noise and everything. And it's Essentially, though, you know, they're and they're trying to find this diamond to prove this, you know, that this thing never he had never had this thing to try and get him out of prison and, you know, clear his name and everything. It's actually a really, really good thriller film. I saw this one when this first came out in theaters years back and remember really liking this one as well. So really cool to watch this one again. 4K wise, though, if you guys have 4K capacities, definitely a, a big upgrade picture quality. Like I said, the big thing you always notice with 4K is like I, the first thing I always notice is it's just a much brighter picture all around. 
much more vibrant picture. Also, the HDR really boosts the contrast level. So if you guys definitely, you know, if you guys have 4K capacities, definitely worth the uh, upgrade here. Also, though, feature-wise, it has a uh, featurette in the film, as well as a trailer with a commentary by Elizabeth Banks. The next one here is a movie from Lionsgate as well called uh, Berlin, I Love You. And there was two other films in this in this series that were like vignettes. I didn't see the other films though, but I know they were a similar type of vignettes, kind of interconnecting vignettes that have, um, that was um, New York I Love You and I believe it was Paris I Love You were the two other ones. And essentially though, this has in here cast-wise, it's got a whole lot of people. It has like uh, Mickey Rourke is in here, Kira Knightley, Helen Mirren, Helen Mirren uh, Diego Luna, uh, Luke Wilson, tons and tons of people. It's also, all the vignettes are directed by all these different directors. And they're, you know, um, Essentially, though, this is all about these characters in uh, Berlin, and like some of them are kind of going through, you know, hard times. Some of them are going through, like, really trying to help people, and like, and they're kind of not having taking time for themselves. So they're kind of more for helping other people. Some of them are trying to find relationships, or starting relationships, or coming out of relationships. So it's all these kind of interconnecting stories where it kind of has a little bit of one story, then another story, and they kind of all go throughout the uh, film here. But it's actually a really interesting character piece here like I said a lot of different you know vignettes by a lot of different directors on this one and like I said I want to let you guys know that this one is available from uh, Lionsgate the next one here is a movie that stars John claude uh, Van Damme uh, from Lionsgate as well called uh, We Die Young and this is essentially though about these uh, these two brothers it's the older brother and his younger brother and the younger brother you know the older brother is like this is all set in Washington DC and it's all about like the um, kind of like the streets and selling drugs and kind of like the crime in this in this one area and like it's the, the older brother he's going around he's like selling drugs but he's not he doesn't really this isn't really what he wants to do but he's kind of in a situation where this is all that he can do to make money and everything and like he's doing this and he's kind of getting in close with the head of this gang he's this very scary guy because he's like if anyone crosses him he kills them and there's like these crazy kind of the ways that he's doing it and everything he's like super relentless but his younger brother really wants to get into this gang and he wants to start selling the drugs and you know as well and the older brother's like no I don't want you to have any connection to this at all but one of the people that the, the brother the older brother sells drugs to is John claude Van Damme's character and like he's somebody who was in the war and he has all kind of post-traumatic stress from it and like he's out there kind of trying to hide out and he's like dealing with his own kind of problems and he was injured in war so he can't talk so he's not does in this movie he's not talking it's he's, he talks through his phone he like he types things out and everything but essentially though something bad happens and like um John claude Van Damme's character kind of helps these kids and he's trying to help them get out of this gang and help them you know get out of this life but it's like of course you know the head of the, the bad gang guy is like coming after them and they're having all sorts of kind of problems but this is a very very different film for John claude Van Damme like a, a different kind of role for him I thought this was actually a pretty well done movie here and this one has on here feature wise storyboard to screen comparisons uh, on set of We Die Young commentary track on here with the writer and director as well as uh, uh, the actor uh, Eliza Rodriguez and Nicholas Sean Johnny as well as a trailer gallery on this one next one here is from Lionsgate as well it's a movie here called Matriarch this is about um, this um this couple that ends up breaking down out in the middle of nowhere, they take like a back road, and it's, you know, every time you know, you, people go on like a back road, you know that's not going to be a good thing because it's like, they say like the one road is closed, they have to go this other way, and they end up breaking down, and the one, the wife is pregnant, and they end up, you know, it's breaking down, they find this house that they kind of walk into, and the guy's like, "What are you doing here? I don't well, use his private property." And he's like, "Well, can we use a phone? We need help." Um, uh, and then they start talking to him. He's acting like, "Get out of here!" And he's acting like he's gonna like, you know, do something bad to them. But then he, she's like, "Oh yeah, but I'm pregnant." And he's like, "Oh, is it a boy or a girl?" And he's like, "Oh, um, uh, it's a boy." And they're like, "Oh, oh, go, you gotta come in. We'll help you out." And you know, he he takes him up to the house, and lets him come in, and of course, you know, there's like these weird sons they have there, and the wife is acting really strange and it was not a good thing that they came to this house because of like what this this family that they go and stay with you know is planning and what they're doing and it's like you just know it's a terrible situation I don't know. I thought this was actually pretty cool. I like these kind of movies about people like falling into like a horrible situation and like with these like crazy families and they're trying to figure out exactly um, you know what they're going to do and how they're going to get away from the situation. There was another movie that was a little bit similar to this movie. I think it was called Estranged. 
I think I think it had a it had a similar kind of vibe like with the parents, you know, the the, the people that are the house that they go to on this one, but a pretty interesting creepy, you know, um I, I guess you could say, like, like I said, it was kind of like the film Estranged. Uh, the next one here is from Lionsgate as well. And this is a um, show that airs on the History Channel. This is the complete first season here. And this is from Robert Zemeckis, is the producer on this one. This is uh, Project Blue Book, and this is based on true events. This is basically, though, about... Um, you know, the Air Force years back had this kind of, basically they were looking into kind of paranormal type things and they were kind of like investigating them and trying like to try and pretty much disprove them that there was no like chance of life, you know, chance of aliens and that kind of stuff. And this is all things that were kind of all classified and now have recently become declassified. It's all about the one person who's the investigator behind them. This kind of has a vibe a little bit of... um sort of like an X-Files kind of vibe this a little bit because they're kind of going and this is kind of this is set to at the time when they weren't really talking about UFOs as much it wasn't like a big thing like now it's like people always talk about UFOs and things but then when this was set it, you know it wasn't like talked about or discussed as much and it all it deals with all kind of you know um you know, UFO paranormal type situations and they're kind of going and in each of the episodes investigating different types of things. But this is actually pretty well done, well acted and well put together here. And this one, like I said, this has all 10 episodes of the show here. It also has the digital copy of it as well. The next one here is from uh, Warner Brothers. They sent over a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this is available. And this is uh, stars uh, Sophia Lillis, you know, who's from, you know, It, the new It film or, you know, the It remake film. And this one, um, you know, she plays uh, Beverly Marsh in uh, It. And this is uh, the film here, uh, Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. And this, you know, Nancy Drew was a, a series of books. And I think that, you know, I, I believe, I don't know if there ever was actually other Nancy Drew films. You know, there was the Nancy Drew film with Emma Roberts from, I think, like 2009 or something like that, or 2008, 2009, something around that time. But before that, I don't know if there was other ones. Like, I don't know if they ever made a movie of this one or not. Or I feel like there might have been a show or something. I don't know if I'm wrong about that. But essentially, though, this is a modernized version of Nancy Drew. And this is from the director, you know, uh, you know, um, Kat Shea, who directed. Um, this is her first film in a long time. But I always liked her movies. She did, you know, like, The Rage Carry 2. She did Poison Ivy. A bunch of different movies. But I always had liked her film. So I'm really glad to see her doing a new movie. But this is essentially, though, like I said, a modernized version of... Um, you know, uh, Nancy Drew. And basically, though, in the beginning of this movie, Nancy Drew's, like, um, friend gets embarrassed because of, like, this this video that was posted. This guy filmed it and kind of, like, you know, really embarrassed her with something that was done in it. And they go and get the guy back and they end up, like, painting him, you know, they put th mess with the thing in the shower and it dyes his skin blue. And it's kind of like Big Fat Liar, that kind of situation. And, it, like, he gets, like, totally blue. And because of that, she ends up getting community service because of what happened. But, um... The one day, though, the um, this this older woman and her, you know, uh, granddaughter come and are talking to the police about how weird things are going on in their house. Things are moving. The lights are flickering and everything. And the police are like, "We don't have time for this. I only have one deputy. I can't worry about this." And Nancy Drew, who likes to solve crimes and mysteries and things like that, she's like, "Oh, I'll go over to the house. I'll look into it." And of course, though, she goes over there to look into it and kind of tries to figure out exactly what's going on in this house. If this house is haunted, there's all sorts of other kind of mystery kind of stuff going on. There's stuff in the town too dealing with like this train that wants to get built and everything. I thought this was actually pretty well done. This has on here though um, you know a gag reel on here as well as a featurette on the movie as well but like I said this is actually like I said actually was a pretty well done movie here. And the next one I got here from Disney is the live-action Kim Possible movie. This is based on the Kim Possible animated series, which ran on Disney. I think it was from 2002 to 2007. And I believe there was, like, some TV movies as well in that same period of time. And it also, the, the movie, it definitely... Um, references some things from the show and like it changed around a few things as well because I remember I saw a couple episodes here and there when the show first started you know back in 2002 2003 around that period of time but essentially though this is about the character of Kim Possible who is a you know a superhero who kind of goes not exactly like a superhero with like powers exactly but she goes and kind of fights crime and like you know saves people from problems and like goes after bad guys and that kind of stuff and it's about her and her friend you know who she 
she goes around with. And essentially, though, you know, in this, though, one of the villains that she's gone after many times and she's put, you know, put away many times, he's escaped from prison. And it's basically about her trying to go after him again. It also deals with her... Um, meeting this new girl at school who is because she just started at high school and she met this girl there who's like kind of not really very popular and everything and she's kind of trying to help her um you know kind of become more popular and th that kind of stuff as well but it's, like i said it, it helps if you've seen some episodes of the original series though because it kind of like i said it kind of references some things and it references some of the characters and everything she's also getting help along the way from her one friend who's kind of like watching from like he's watching a screen and stuff and he's like saying oh if you go this way this way will help you with this kind of stuff so she's kind of has like he's kind of helping her along the way and stuff the one character who's playing her friend in here he's from the show uh the goldbergs he's the main kid in the goldbergs but on here though feature wise this has audition tapes on here from the actors it has a q a uh on here as well as bloopers on this release here the next one I got here is from Sony. This is the movie which stars Steve Coogan and John C. Riley, and this is uh, Stan and Ollie. I've talked about this some in the past. Really, really like this movie a lot. Uh, this one is basically, though, the story of Lauren Hardy. This is the later years with Lauren Hardy when they had broken up years back because one of them had gone off and done a movie without the other, and like they kind of saw it as a betrayal and everything, and they kind of like had fallen off at this point. And they've come back together, and you know they end up wanting to. They're going around doing these shows, and like the show are like not booked well the person who's like their manager of this is like booking these shows he's like their places are not filled at all they're not doing well and because they don't really want to do promotion but it's kind of about them trying to get more people to come at the same time they're kind of like well we got we want to do this because they both really want to have a big comeback film and they wrote a movie uh, Steve Coogan's character wrote this movie and they really want that to be their new starring film together because they did all these things together and in the past and essentially though it's about them trying to go around doing these shows the same time as trying to deal as well, you know, um, John T. Riley's character's health is not doing so well, and it's it's a really really well done biopic, probably one of the better biopics I've seen in a really really long time, you know. And both Steve Coogan and John T. Riley did an amazing job in this movie, great acting all around. But if you guys are a fan of Lauren Hardy, and even if you don't know too much about them, because I didn't know too much about their films, still 100% worth checking out. Has on here a uh, cast and crew Q and A, three featurettes, a deleted, a three deleted and extended scenes, as well as a theatrical trailer in this one. And the next one I got here is from. Grouta's Ventures, and it's a movie here called No Alternative. I just finished watching this movie. Absolutely a must-watch film. Top recommendation. Love this movie so much. This movie stars Harry, Harry Hamlin. And it's set in 1994, the time of, you know, grunge music, when grunge music was really, really popular, and Nirvana was huge at the time, too. It was right when, um, you know, uh, Kurt Cobain, you know, had committed suicide. It's kind of the reaction to that and like the everything that was going on. And it's essentially though about Harry Hamlin's family, his character Harry Hamlin's character's family, and you know, what they're going through at the time. You know, they're all sort of things, different things they're doing. And Harry Hamlin's character is this judge, and his, you know, life has gotten really, really turned upside down because he ended up po you know, uh, setting bail for this woman who tried to attack her husband for like a huge amount of money because she thought he thought there was no way she's gonna make this bail. It was like six hundred and fifty thousand thousand dollars or something but she ended up making bail and ended up going home and killing her family and it was a terrible thing and Harry Hellman's character was being blamed for this so he is like a total emotional wreck about the whole thing and people are blaming him and he's having you know all the blame coming on him and it's an investigation and all sorts of thing and you know um, his son uh, Harry Hellman's son in the film his character he's really into grunge music and really wants to have his own garage band kind of grunge music band that he kind of is working on and his sister, though, his sister's kind of looking at him like, she really does not like this music at all. She doesn't like the music of the time. And she really likes, you know, rap music. And she goes around and is going around to, like, um, co this coffee house and stuff and making these really out there rap music that she, you know, she found this keyboard and she's going around making this out there rap music. And people are kind of looking at her real weird, the kind of stuff that she's doing. But it's all about, like, um the family and what they're going through and the brother he meets this girlfriend that's played by Chloe Levine who was in a bunch of different stuff she was in a horror movie really cool horror movie called The Ranger and she was also in a amazing uh, vampire film called uh, Transfiguration which I feel like really under the radar movie highly recommend you guys check that one out probably one of the coolest vampire movies in a long time but this is basically though all about what they're going through about the brother working on this band about the sister kind of her she's going through all these kind of emotional problems and she's been on 
on um, medication stuff since she was a kid and she's like just keeps they keep giving her more and more pills and stuff to try and calm her down and everything but just in a like I said a very very emotional movie but an absolute must watch film love this one so much and the next one I got here is from Groucho's Ventures as well it's a movie here called Digital Lives Matter this one stars uh, DC Youngfly who's really really popular on Instagram he's been in some movies as well but like he plays a sort of a version of himself he's this guy who has you know th his character has like 3.5 million Instagram followers he's like super popular in there and that's pretty much all he does is like do social media kind of things but one day he ends up waking up and all of his followers are gone. He's like panicking. He doesn't know what to do. And he gets this message from like the person that hacked the account. And they're saying like, you know, if you don't do exactly what I say, you're never going to get your followers back. And he's basically sent on these things that he has to do. And it's basically him going and meeting some of his followers. And he has to go to do one thing. And then he gets another message that says, go to this person and do that. At the same time, though, he's trying to DC young fly. We went to his one friend who's real like in the computers and all into technology and everything. And he's having him try and look into exactly who is this person, figure out where he is and track him down. He's also in a real big situation though because he was just invited to go to this huge audition which is only open to people who have a million followers. And since he doesn't have the followers anymore, he won't be able to go to this audition unless he can get them back and he only has like a day to do it. So it's like I said, it's essentially about him like panicking, trying to figure out how he's going to get his followers back, trying to figure out, you know, if he's going to be able to get to this audition and like his friend trying to figure out who is behind this whole thing and it's him getting into all kind of wacky crazy situations and you know worse and worse problems as the movie goes along but like I said this one here is uh, Digital Lives Matter. And the next one here is from RLJ Entertainment. It's a movie here starring Sam Elliott. This is called The Man Who Killed Hitler and Then the Bigfoot. Sam Elliott, though, Sam Elliott is always so good in everything. Always been a huge fan of him, but he's like someone who's like a total scene stealer. Like, he's great in everything. You know, gives a great performance and everything. He's really, really good in this movie. And it's kind of a different movie for him as well. But essentially, though, this is about his character when he was younger. And it kind of cuts back and forth to when he was younger, when he ended up, you know, killing uh, Hitler. And it's kind of like, you know, never, no one ever knew about this or anything it was something that he had done and like he always it's also him kind of thinking about things in his past where he wishes he kind of did things differently but essentially though you know there's this plague that's threatening you know Canada and then like and it's basically though believes to be like linked to Bigfoot out in the Canadian wilderness and it's basically though about him going on this mission to try and track down and kill Bigfoot and that's essentially what it is and it's a lot of stuff of him like going on the journey and everything but a really really well made movie great acting from uh, Sam Elliott like I said Sam Elliott is always so good a really interesting movie all around great cast in this movie as well the one actor in here who's a character actor who's been in like everything he's been like you know Night Professor movies and all kinds of stuff always a big fan of him uh he you know larry miller he's in this movie this has on here the making of the film deleted scenes as well as a concept art gallery a bunch of other things on this one as well the next one here is from screen media this is a movie from the uk it's a really fun movie and this um it's a movie here called uh, Patrick. The main actress in here really reminds me, she has like a similar look to Anna Kendrick. It's sort of like a British Anna Kendrick. And this is basically, though, about this girl who ends up... Um, she basically though you know her grandmother dies and she's like this grand her grandmother was like a really really rich woman who had this dog who um you know named Patrick who you know was really spoiled and she would give him all kind of human food and all kinds of fancy things but Patrick though you know is since the grandmother dies she leaves the the you know the Patrick her the, her dog to her granddaughter and it's kind of like she's like I don't want to deal with this dog I'm getting ready to start this teaching job I can't do with this but they you know they, you know that she reluctantly takes the dog and it's her dealing with all sorts of problems with the dog and trying to get used to him and everything but it's one of those movies where it's about this dog is really really like helping this woman out because it's kind of like helping her kind of perk up a little bit in life because she kind of isn't doing too much and is kind of like down the dumps about other things in her life and having kind of relationship problems and all sorts of problems but this movie though um also in here is um you know Ed Skeeran um you know who was you know recently in Alita and you know he was in the Transporter movie I call, always call I think I always call it Transporter 2.0 I don't think that was what it was called but it was like the young he plays like the young Jason Statham in that spin-off Transporter movie the prequel movie um but you know I, he was also in this movie as well I really like this movie a lot of like known British actors as well in this one but um 
I don't know, I really, really like this one a lot. This one has on here, though, a behind-the-scenes featurette on this one. The next one here, I'll have a link where you guys can order this one for the best price. And this is um, from National Geographic, and this is Doomsday Preppers. This is the complete third season of the show. This is a um, three-disc set here. It also includes deleted scenes on this. And if you guys don't know this show, this is basically all about people who are all into prepping for, like, the end of the world, or if there was a huge, massive food shortage, or if, you know, there was a flood and all these different kind of things and it's all about them kind of they, they build these elaborate fallout shelters or some of them like you know are kind of hoarding up all types of food planning for terrible things that could happen and the show is basically going and kind of like looking at what they have showing their stuff them kind of telling their story of what they would do and they're also like judged on you know how well they think that they could survive like looking at what they have and their preparations and everything I really like this show I watch the show a lot when this was on and you know I haven't seen this one in a long time so really glad to see these ones are getting released now on uh, DVD the next ones here are all from Mill Creek and one thing I want to mention about Mill Creek too they announced they are releasing a whole bunch of 90s movies, you know, in June, which I can't wait. They're putting a whole bunch of them on Blu-ray. They're putting out, like, Pauly Shore's Jury Duty. They're putting out um, High School High, um, tons and tons of different ones, like uh, Excess Baggage, the movie with uh, Lisa Silverstone, which is kind of one you don't hear about too much. Um, a bunch of other ones as well. So really cool. I cannot wait for those ones. The first one I want you guys to know about, which is really cool, because this one went out of print and now is released in this new set. This comes out in about a week. I think it comes out in the 16th. I think all these ones came, come out April 16th, but you guys can get these ones on you know Mill Creek's website or on Amazon or anything like that. But this is a four-in-one movie collection here, which has three, uh, four different films on here. It has Miami Magma, um, it has Arachnaquake, uh, Ghostquake, and Weather Wars. Now, Ghostquake is the movie that I'm in, and a lot of people have asked, you know, when it comes to like stuff that I've acted in, you know, what's some of the best stuff to watch, you know, that I've, you know, that I've acted in, or I've been in the most of the film. This one, though, I'm in like probably like 60 60 percent or so of this movie, and it was back when I was really, really heavy. I always really liked this movie. It's basically about this school that, you know. Um, kind of becomes taken over by the, this evil headmaster and like my character ends up breaking into the school with his friends to try and change these test scores because he's getting I'm getting forced by uh, Mark Donato's character who is from the show Degrassi um, you know he was also I always remember him too from Billy Madison who's the you know Billy Madison was like talking to the kid saying I'll trade you that you know uh, f uh, my um, you know for your um, pudding cup thing and he's like no no I don't want that anymore. But but basically though, you know I'm in there breaking into the school and stuff, crawling through vents and everything. Re always really like this movie. The one thing though, this the edit of this movie though is the the like um, the the um, not the American edit of the movie. It's the version because when this was aired on Sci-Fi, it aired under the title Haunted High. Then when it got released to uh, DVD everywhere, it got changed. The name was changed to Ghostquake. And like um, in America, when it released years back on DVD, it was the basically just the title was changed. It was the sci-fi version of the movie. This one, though, is the version that aired like in other countries. So like the gore and stuff like that, it's kind of cropped out. So you don't see all the gore. It's the same exact length of the movie. Nothing was cut, but like some of the gore stuff is kind of cut away from and stuff. But still, really, really glad that this one is out. So if you guys want to see me in something, especially where I was in like throughout the whole movie, this is one I highly recommend. Really glad this one's back out in print again. And it's a two-disc set. and also has digital copies, but like the first First disc is uh, Arachnaquake and Ghostquake, and then Miami Magma and Weather Wars. What's funny is I almost was in Arachnaquake too, playing like the part in the very beginning of the movie, but then it was like I wasn't able to get there like in enough time because I had to get there like the next day and it was in New Orleans. Uh, the next ones here are from um, Mill Creek as well, and these are two films from uh, Andy Sedaris, and they're releasing a whole bunch of different Andy. I, be I, don't I believe they're going to be releasing more of them because they had trailers for a whole bunch of his films, and these are all like actual. Um, kind of um, over the top, super 80s, um, you know, um, films. And they're all kind of like dealing with like heist and, you know, robberies and like the ones dealing with this giant snake and all kinds of crazy stuff. They were kind of like the movies like Hired to Kill and a bunch of these kind of movies around the 80s. But these ones are finally coming out. And I don't think these had ever been released before in the past. And the ones, the first ones that come out are Hard Ticket to Hawaii and Malibu Express. And these ones have on here, though, they're brand new, um, first time on Blu-ray from a widescreen, from a 4K widescreen 
widescreen restoration. Both of these ones look really, really good here on Blu-ray. And they have introductions here by the director, as well as commentary tracks on both of them, and behind-the-scenes featurette, as well as, like I said, trailers for the other uh, films from the director. And I, I believe they're going to be releasing some of the other ones down the line. The next one here is from uh, Wild Eye Releasing. It's, this is called The La Llorona uh, Curse. This is basically a found footage movie. It starts off at the, the police kind of talking about this one girl whose daughter had gone, the guy whose, man, guy whose daughter had gone missing. And, you know, she was seen in this video. This, it was all found footage stuff. So she was actually seeing this video and she's not been seen since. And it's basically this guy was doing a kind of paranormal type show. And he does like going around a paranormal type things and kind of cuts it together and makes like a show out of the whole thing. And he was investigating the La Llorona court curve. And he was going to this one house that was said to be haunted. And then, like, um, of course, you know, when there's house investigating it, weird things start to happen and everything. So it kind of like the night starts getting worse and worse and worse for what's going on. And like I said, it kind of cuts back and forth to, like... Um, then like the investigation stuff and then back to the found footage of things together but um, this one has on here though cast interviews uh, red carpet premiere uh, news coverage uh, trailers and uh, this one as well the next one's here are from art exploitation films and this is um, a movie here called uh, the man in the magic box this one's kind of hard to explain it kind of has a little bit of a, of a vibe of um, and it even says on here like or or well in Gillian a sci-fi thriller kind of like um, 12 monkeys a little Little bit that sort of kind of vibe and it also has like super like futuristic kind of looks and stuff like that like they invented a lot of stuff for this and it's like I said it's called the man with the magic box this is essentially though um yeah the man with the magic it's basically though about this guy who is um he kind of like is he's, he doesn't remember anything he's kind of like totally like oblivious to his past and he starts getting this job like cleaning up there and everything it's a, this building and there's all these kind of weird rules in this building because like I said it's a futuristic kind of thing but there's, there's also dealing with like things from the past and then like he meets this girl where he's working and then like it's kind of all about like this sort of what is going on here and why does this guy not remember anything and like what exactly is going on and like how does it deal with the past and like I said it's very hard to explain but really really well done like I said I really like the look of um how they invented all these type of different looks of the future and these kind of technology and like the clothes and everything it was a cool styles and everything this one is from art exploitation films as well this is an anthology film here called terror five which is not really like an like segment segment there anthology where it's like a host or anything it's one of the ones kind of like um trick or treat where they, they kind of all interween to wind together and it's about like um this kind of accident that happened and these people had died in the building and they're kind of like investigating if like the person Person in charge is going to get off on these charges for you know what he did and if he knew and everything that the building was there was dangerous stuff about it and everything and it's kind of cutting back and forth between that and these things happening like one of the stories is like this guy who meets this girl and they go to kind of go into the school in the middle of the night and he thinks that they're going there because she really likes him and he comes to find out that they're like they're kidnapping the teacher teachers are people that they don't like and kind of torturing them and really like messing around with them big time and it's kind of all these different stories and it kind of goes throughout the night and everything about like a robbery and all these different kind of things and they like I said they all kind of interconnect a little bit so it kind of goes back and forth between the things this is actually really pretty cool anthology like I said it was done in a similar kind of trick or treats type style here and the next one here I have a link where you guys can order this one but this is from the website um, hellofanightmovie.com this is a movie here called Hell of a Night this one has the DVD, the Blu-ray, as well as a digital download code for this one as well. This is essentially, though, the beginning of this movie, you see these girls playing this game as they're messing around the Ouija board, and the one girl ends up getting pulled away. And it's, what's basically what's going on is, though, this one girl is like sort of kind of needs a break and get away from everything so she goes to stay in this kind of house out kind of out in the middle of nowhere and her friends are like well why are you going why what do you want to get away for two weeks for she's saying I mean, i'm gonna go away for two weeks to kind of get away from everything what it, what ends up going on though is she ends up in that house kind of like you know finds a ouija board in there and kind of starts messing around like but the second before she even starts messing around the ouija board or anything weird things start happening in the house things start moving she starts hearing things and everything it's all kind of about 
what's going on there. And it also cuts back and forth too to like her sister and then her friend and all that kind of connection to what's going They're having sort of things going on as well. It's one of those movies though, it's not like the typical kind of thing like this. There's a lot of different sort of surprises and some really different stuff going on. It's not like the typical just like messing with a, with a Ouija board. It's dealing with a whole lot of other kind of odd things happening as well. This one has on here though, featurette wise, it has uh, bloopers and outtakes, deleted and extended scenes, as well as a uh, photo gallery on this one. And the last one here is from, the director sent this one over to uh, let you guys know about. It's a movie here which has on here, that stars Bruce Davidson, Malcolm McDowell is in here, Tyler Maine, Leslie Eastbrick, um, Gilbert Godfrey, and it's a movie here called Ab Ab um, Abnormal Attraction. And this was a really interesting, fun movie. This is like all about like, um, like in a world where like um, fairy tale characters have come to life and they kind of like live with everybody else in the real world. And it's kind of like um, some of them, you you know, people are really against them and really against these fairy tale characters because some of them are like doing some crazy things. But it's a really, really ambitious movie because it's got all these, they made all these different types of creatures. Some of them kind of remind me of like um, the show Monst Monsters, you know, the anthology film, like anthologies TV series, like at the beginning, like segment of that. Like this really cool creatures and everything. It's kind of all about these creatures all living together and then like there are some of them are having like problems with one another and some of them are really against this and all this and want them the creatures to be gone away and everything like, this is just a really really fun wacky uh, goofy fun movie this has on here though um a blu-ray uh, exclusive it was his behind the scenes on this one as well as a blooper reel but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video thanks so much for watching subscribing let me know in the comments below though what you guys thought of the films if you guys have seen any of these movies that i reviewed and i'll see you guys later